Imagine going through something really tough in life, maybe a personal tragedy or a deep sense of loss. It's not uncommon for people in such situations to turn to religion or spirituality for comfort. It offers a sense of safety, a feeling that things might just be okay because there's a bigger plan at work. But unfortunately, not everyone who reaches out to religion or spirituality finds that comfort in a safe or healthy way. There are those who, in their search for meaning, end up in the wrong places. Worse still, there are individuals who exploit the vulnerability of those seeking solace, using religion or spiritual beliefs as a means to control, manipulate, or even harm others. This is the story of the Soldiers of Christ, a case that highlights the darker side of religious manipulation and the terrible consequences it can have. In mid-October 2023, a courtroom scene unfolded live for everyone to witness, a rare occasion where the public could watch justice being served in real time. The atmosphere was tense as the evidence was meticulously presented, piece by piece, leaving no doubt about the heinous nature of the crime that had been committed. Across the room sat five young defendants, all of Asian descent, their faces blank, their bodies still. They remained silent as the charges against them were laid out, offering no explanations or attempts to justify their actions. The lack of remorse or reasoning added to the eerie weight to the proceedings. This group called themselves the Soldiers of Christ. At first glance, they might seem like young people with a deep dedication to their savior, Jesus Christ, but their version of devotion came with a disturbing twist. To join this group, one had to undergo a form of military-like training and initiation, far from the typical activities of a youth Bible group. Beneath the surface, something far more sinister was at play. When asked about the purpose of their group, the defendants could only reply that they were following the words of God as they believed them to be revealed. Like many cults, the Soldiers of Christ operated in secrecy, shrouded in mystery. Their main place of worship was not a church or a community center, but the basement of their leader's house. Chun Ho, the founder of Soldiers of Christ, Chun Hyun Lee, the leader of the group, and the youngest Chun Young are brothers. These individuals were at the center of a crime that would shock the city of Atlanta in 2023. It all began on September 12, 2023. Eric Hyun, one of the older members, called his stepfather from the Jeju Sana in Gwinnett, Georgia. He was in obvious pain, struggling with aches all over his body, and desperately needed to go to the hospital. His stepfather, concerned, rushed to pick him up and took him to the hospital, leaving Hyun's Jaguar car parked at the sauna. Surveillance footage showed Hyun barely able to walk, needing his stepfather's support just to stay upright. Later, while Hyun was being treated, he mentioned that he had left something important in his car. He asked his stepfather to return to the sauna and retrieve it. Without hesitation, his stepfather agreed, but when he searched the car, he couldn't find whatever it was Hyun needed. Confused, he opened the trunk and was hit by a foul, overpowering odor that made him recoil. Inside the trunk, wrapped in a magenta-colored blanket, was the body of a woman. She was already in an advanced state of decomposition, explaining the horrific smell. The sight was both shocking and heartbreaking. The woman was so skinny that her body weighed less than 70 pounds, or about 31 kilograms. Hyun's stepfather immediately called the police, and the sauna's parking lot quickly transformed into a crime scene. The investigators determined that the woman's body had likely been in the car for over a week. The discovery of her body marked the beginning of a deeper investigation into the Soldiers of Christ, 
revealing the dark and twisted beliefs that led to this tragic outcome. The investigation took a grim turn when the police, following the discovery of the woman's body in Eric Ken's car, traced the vehicle's license plate to an address in Lawrenceville, about 30 miles northeast of Atlanta. Early the next morning, officers arrived at a modest stucco and stone home. The house appeared well-kept, windows were open, the lawn was neatly mowed, and the place looked lived in. Yet, despite making their presence known and calling out, no one answered the door. With a search warrant in hand, the police entered the home to conduct a more thorough investigation. The interior of the house was immaculate, everything in its place, with nothing appearing out of the ordinary. But as they made their way down to the basement, the atmosphere shifted. A strong odor of cleaning products hung in the air, and it was clear that the area had been recently scrubbed down. The cabinets were stocked with cleaning supplies, and most disturbingly, there were traces of blood on the carpet, partially obscured, but unmistakable. This seemingly suburban, cozy home belonged not to Eric Hyun, but to the Lee family, immigrants from South Korea. The family consisted of 54-year-old Mihi Lee, her husband, who was a pastor at a local church, and their three sons, 25-year-old Chun Ho Lee, 22-year-old Chun Hyun Lee, and their youngest, a 14-year-old boy. Also living in the house were Chun Ho's fiance, Hyun Ji Lee, and their cousin, Ka Won Lee, who had come from Korea to visit. Though the father's presence in the house was unclear, he was seldom mentioned, the rest of the family lived together under one roof. The Lee family was deeply religious. The father, being a pastor, naturally guided their spiritual life and even the eldest son, Chun Ho, sometimes gave speeches at church. In one such speech, captured on video, Chun Ho made some rather unusual claims. He spoke of being able to see demon spirits, and even boasted that he could pray to stop the rain or control the weather. These statements were quite extraordinary, but they reflected the intensity of the family's religious fervor. The Lees were close with another family, the Cho family, who were like family friends. One day, Sei Cho, a 33-year-old woman, and her mother moved in with the Lees. Sei had been through a traumatic experience. She was a victim of sexual assault, and she turned to her faith in God to help her heal and move forward. The Lee family, being so devout, seemed like the perfect support system for Sei as she sought to deepen her religious practices, including participating in fasting prayers. Typically, fasting prayers last about three days, but the defendants later claimed that Sei voluntarily embarked on a grueling 40-day fast. Sei was invited by the Lee children to join their youth church, which they called the Soldiers of Christ. Eager to strengthen her faith, Sei agreed and was told what she needed to do to become a member. Details about the training she underwent are unclear, but it's evident that it was anything but standard. While fasting, one is usually allowed to eat, at least occasionally, to maintain strength, but reports suggest that Sei was denied food entirely. Tragically, her mother, who had returned to Korea for business reasons after they moved in with the Lees, was unaware of what was happening. She kept in touch with her daughter and Mrs. Lee for a while, but then suddenly all communication stopped, leaving her in the dark about the horrors her daughter was enduring. According to reports, Sei Cho's invitation into the Soldiers of Christ was nothing short of brutal. The group's leader claimed that Sei's soul was tainted by a demon, which supposedly justified the harsh treatment she received. As part of the initiation, Sei was forced to pray for six hours a day, perform daily chores, and was only allowed to use the bathroom twice a day. And when she made mistakes or angered the group members, they resorted to physical violence, further compounding her suffering. But Sei wasn't the only one enduring this torturous process. Eric Hyun, another member of the group, was also subjected to the same treatment. 
In fact, an attorney representing Hyun later revealed in a letter that he had been physically tortured, beaten, and even shot with an airsoft gun in the basement of the Lee family's home. This abuse was part of a so-called religious ritual. Moreover, the others had coerced Hyun into transferring tens of thousands of dollars to accounts in Korea, funds that were reportedly used for their personal gain and to buy a new house. Only after these demands were met was Hyun allowed to exit the initiation process and gain his freedom. Sehi, however, not long after her initiation began, reached a breaking point, desperate, and in nothing but her underwear, she tried to flee the basement and ran upstairs to beg for the torture to stop. But no one did anything to stop the abuse, and Sehi was dragged back down by the members to the basement to continue the grueling process. Her torment was meticulously documented on the phones of the group members, who exchanged messages about how to handle her during this horrific time. These messages and photos would later serve as crucial evidence in court. Detective Angela Carter from the Gwinnett Police Department shared disturbing details during a court hearing. She testified that the suspects actually recorded videos of themselves torturing Sei in the basement of their home. In one of the videos, Sei was shown standing on her head, her hands tied behind her back while she was being whipped with a belt. Another video from August captured her being forced into a tub of ice. By then, Sei was so frail that it was heartbreaking to watch. Carter described how Sei was still alive in the video, but barely. She was struggling to breathe, looking incredibly weak, almost at the point of death. Experts believe that this torture was part of what they thought was an exorcism ritual because the group claimed her soul was contaminated by a demon. The starvation, along with the physical and psychological abuse, fits the pattern of cult tactics aimed at breaking down a person's ability to think critically. Cults often use such methods like sleep deprivation and isolation to instill fear and make members too afraid to question the leader or the group's practices. Unfortunately, Sei's desperate pleas for the torture to end were ignored, and the group coldly documented everything, leading to her tragic death from starvation and abuse. Let's piece together the timeline. Sei's initiation began on July 27th, 2023. From that day on, she was deprived of food and water. By August 17th, Sei was desperately screaming for food after nearly a month of starvation. Chun Young Lee, one of the members, reported this in a chat message, and Chun Hyun Lee responded by instructing him to beat her if she screamed again. Two days later, on August 19th, Chun Hyun sent himself a chilling message with dates, documenting that Sei began her fasting and was assaulted. The final entry was marked with an estimated time of death, 1 a.m. time of death. In the aftermath, Hyun, who had been tasked with keeping Sei quiet during her final days, was given the grim responsibility of disposing of her body. This decision seemed designed to make him the scapegoat, bearing the full weight of the crime. But it's worth considering, did Hyun purposely tip off his stepfather about the body in his car? Was this his way of ensuring that if he went down, he would take the rest of the group with him, especially after what they had done to both him and Sei? Disturbingly, even after Sei's death, the group's leaders, Chun Ho and Hyun Ji Lee, reportedly discussed adding another Korean woman to their fold. They even considered a girl who was a student at Georgia Tech, with Chun Ho talking to her about transferring colleges. The chilling realization that they might have been planning to lure another victim into their cult prompted multiple pastors and religious organizations to organize a seminar in November that year to warn local colleges about the dangers of Korean cults and how they operate. The shockwaves from this tragic case rippled through the community, leaving everyone stunned, especially those who lived in the neighborhood. 
The Lee family has always been seen as devout, God-fearing people, making it hard for anyone to believe that they could be involved in something so horrific. An article even commented on how religion, being a cornerstone of the Asian community, can sometimes make it easier for people to get drawn into cults and become fanatics. But no one ever imagined that the Lee family, of all people, would be capable of such darkness. Some neighbors described them as pretentious, people who kept their chins up and never engaged with others when passing by. As the investigation unfolded, all the tenants of the house were arrested, except for the family patriarch. They now face serious charges, including felony murder, imprisonment, tampering with evidence, and concealing a death. On September 15th, 2023, the suspects appeared in court to hear the charges against them. They seemed compliant during the proceedings, but the judge denied them bond, and attorneys were appointed for three of the suspects. In a later court appearance on January 17th, 2024, Mi Hee Lee and her son, Chun Young Lee, both pleaded not guilty. Meanwhile, Eric Hyun, who had been granted $100,000 bond after his attorney argued for his innocence, was released under strict conditions. He had to wear an ankle bracelet and was prohibited from having any contact with the Lee family. As the case continues to progress, many are watching closely, hoping that justice for Sei Cho will be served. This case has also sparked a broader conversation about the nature of cults. An expert on cults pointed out that this situation fits a familiar pattern. No one intentionally joins a destructive cult, despite what the defendants claimed about Sei willingly participating. Often, people are lured in by something that seems positive and mainstream. It's only after they've become deeply involved that the true nature of the group reveals itself, leading members to either embrace the fanaticism or desperately seek a way out. Experts say there are certain red flags to watch for when it comes to identifying a cult. These groups often isolate their members from the outside world, including their own families. They establish a controlling hierarchy where the leaders have the final say on everything. Members are manipulated, guilt-tripped, and sometimes even shunned if they attempt to leave. So if you've encountered anything like this, sharing your story could help others recognize and avoid similar situations. Sei was simply seeking comfort in her faith, but these people twisted that need into something cruel for their own power trip. As we wait for the final outcome of this case, let's hope that justice will be served and that Sei's soul may rest in peace. Please stay vigilant and trust your instincts. If something feels off, it probably is. Stay safe out there, and thanks for watching.